Hey folks, I wanted to talk a little bit today about a program that I've been using for quite some time now. Uh, this program is called Mid Journey. And if you've, you know, been buried in the sand somewhere or just didn't have Wi-Fi, Mid Journey is one of the AI programs, the AI that will either transform the way we use computers or kill all of us, depending on your point of view. Now, Midjourney is designed specifically to take prompts from human beings and generate art. Now, there are some very strong feelings on both the aesthetics and the ethics of AI art, but I want to take a very narrow focus and simply look at the way these kinds of machines can be used to generate art that's useful with your CNC. So I'm only going to cover Midjourney at kind of a high level. Suffice to say, like everything else on the internet, you can sign up for an account at midjourney.com and they'll walk you through the instructions for setting things up and show you how to get started in the documentation. So when you first start out, Midjourney uses something called Discord in order to generate these images. And Discord can be a little bit overwhelming at first. Uh, it's kind of like a noisy bar where a bunch of conversations are taking place all at once. So right now we're in a discussion area for Midjourney. And this is where people talk about the different kinds of things that they're trying to do, what works well, what doesn't. There's other ones for philosophy, for generating prompts, requests for ideas and features, different image jams. But what I want to do first is just start us off with a quiet area where we can do things where we're not interrupting other people's conversations. So I'm going to type slash msg and we're directly messaging a user. In this case, I'm going to type mid and I want to message directly the mid journey bot, this guy right here. And I'm just going to tell him hello for right now. And what this is going to do is this is going to open up a private conversation between myself and the Midjourney bot. Now you can see I've had some other previous things here, but what this lets us do is it's essentially a quiet space, right? And I can start doing things with the bot. First off, I'm going to tell it Imagine. Imagine is what gets it to draw things. And then I need to tell it a prompt. So let's say I want something simple, a sugar skull. Okay. So this is what it's given us, and we've got four panels here, and we've got some buttons. These are for upscaling one of our selections, or creating variations on one of our selections, or simply rerunning the prompt. Now, for our purposes, these aren't terribly useful, right? Uh, they look more like photographs. What we want is something a little more like what's up here. So let's try this again, and I'm going to say imagine a simplified vector. And I can add commas and describe additional things that I want. So we're going to start with a simplified ve vector illustration of a sugar skull and I want it black and white. Uh, I want a white background. Alright, let's try that. Okay, now these look a little bit more like something that we could bring into Carbide and get some nice results with, right? So we could bring these in and trace them pretty easily. So 
I'm going to close this real quick. I'm going to choose this guy right here. He is image number three. I'm going to upscale him. All right. And then I'm going to open him in the web. Yep. That takes us over here. Cool. So now I've got that and I can download him. Okay, so now back in Carbide Create, we use our trace image function. This is going to allow us to pick an image and trace it. And I'm going to go into my downloads folder that we just did. And I need to find that photo, which they do these kind of strangely. If I remember, they start with my name. There we are. John Clark. All right. Okay, so now we open this guy up, we choose Trace Image, and we call it OK. Cool, there's my Sugar Skull image. Everybody's linked together, and I can just scale him down to be the size that I need. Keep my proportions done. Center him. All right. And we should be good to go. Now, there are some problems that you run into with some of these images, and I'll show you a little bit more on a more complicated one that I did earlier. Okay, so to start with, we're going to use our Import and Trace button, which is this one right here. And we're going to select our this is the right folder maybe yeah that one that's the one we want all right we're gonna select her bring it in this looks good trace the image all right that's got that all right and I want to make sure these are grouped and we're gonna get it to the right size for our canvas so we'll go ahead and scale keep proportions take this down to about nine inches done and then we'll center it all right cool so now that we've got this we can take it in and just set things up to vcarve use the current selection since our piece is only a quarter inch thick we want a max depth of Point one, point two, rather, and then we're going to click OK. Let it calculate. Okay, now the first thing I'm noticing is there's some jankiness here. These kind of areas where you see just like big open space are going to look kind of crummy. I'll show you in the simulation. So you see, you've got these weird little dug dugout areas that aren't really pleasing to the eye they're just they're kind of grouty looking so we're going to do away with those first let's hide our simulation go back in our design and with everything selected what i'm going to do is i'm going to use our inset tool here and i'm going to create some more shapes inside of these in order to give us some more fine lines so i'm going to come in here and I'm going to set this to about 0.05 inside. And what that's going to do is any place where you've got the room for it, it's going to put another line inside of there. And I'll show you what that looks like. All right. Now you've noticed we've got some lines inside here. And that means that when we come back, I'm going to go back into tool paths. I'm going to select everything open this back up I'm gonna change my vectors to the current selection which will be everything including our new lines and click OK alright you see now those have been cleaned up and if we look at our simulation much better. I notice we've got some pieces here and some pieces here that we're going to need to deal with 
and I think I know what those are as well. So let's dive back into our design. And for this, I'm going to break everybody apart. All right, and I'm going to dive in. This was the area I think we were dealing with. So there's an area in here somewhere where we have overlapping shapes. And I can see, like when I click on this one, I'll notice that this shape overlaps, this shape overlaps. And I need to fix all those overlaps in order to get it to look a little bit better when we V-carve. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy, hold my shift key, and use my arrow key to just nudge him over slightly. Then I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab this guy, and I'm going to use the node editor. And I'm going to grab that node and move it over. Right? So that those two pieces no longer overlap. Now I probably have some other places because this is a really funky one. Um, let's, uh, yeah, so that we don't overlap ourselves. Just keep zooming in until you can get a good idea of where things might, ah, this one up here. Okay, I'm going to actually grab that one and hit the node editor and move this node up that way done all right and you just kind of keep grabbing things and and looking for those overlaps yeah I got one more right here all right let's grab this and when you adjust these little bars if you hold down the option key it lets you adjust them one at a time which is preferable so I'm gonna grab that and drag it up and off of our thing and then I'm gonna go back into our tool paths and it should recalculate we'll see whether or not we've done the right job because it will yeah yeah so now you notice it's tracing around it rather than tracing over it and that will give us a much better result now we had one other down this way grab control and zoom Let's see if that one also has some. Yeah, that one's got some issues because you can see the blue V carve path is going over top of the image, and I can already tell that this right here is going to mess us up. So we want to grab that, and I'm going to go back into design because otherwise it's not going to let us do anything. Grab this node, move him over. That might be all we need to do on this one. Can't see anything else that's overlapped. Let's try that. Done. Toolpath. Yeah, I think that's I think that's got it. So we don't have that weird jankiness over there again. All right. So now let's take a look at it in our simulation. okay that's much much better much much better this will work out well and one other thing that's really helpful when you do this kind of stuff when you make these kinds of changes you notice that the time dropped considerably and that's because carbide's having to do a lot less work to get this thing in the shape that we want it so that's perfect about 68 minutes and that will look very cool I think the thing that I like most about mid journey is that occasionally it surprises me and that's a really fun sensation the other thing is that because it's a conversation between myself and the AI the art has a little bit more of my personality in it rather than just being stock art from somewhere else I think that's a, a really nice advantage to this. Being able to use Carbide Create's trace function also does some really nice things as well. I think the combination of the two is pretty cool, and I think it's definitely something you ought to explore. So until next time, have fun, take chances.